It's the third day of peace talks between Ethiopia's government and Tigrayan re rebels being brokered by the African Union in South Africa. This comes in the wake of several weeks of fierce fighting between both sides after a two-year truce collapsed. The resumption of hostilities coincides with a worsening humanitarian crisis in Tigray, where access to food, water and medicine has been grossly disrupted. Leading to this week's warning by UN Refugees Agency Filippo Grandi that Ethiopian troops are committing nothing short of crimes against humanity, against the vulnerable and non-combatants. Nigeria's former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, is involved in some capacity in the ongoing negotiations. Now, Dr. Joshua Bolarinwa is a fellow at Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, and he joins us now. Good day, son, and let's get straight into it. Uh, we're looking at a position uh, that the global community is taking as Ethiopia as an aggressor. However, the, the, the general consensus on the prognosis what started this crisis is uh, what Ethiopia says an attack on its military bases by Tigrayan forces. Now, the U.S. is the only non-African party at the negotiations. Doesn't this negate the fact that we're looking for African solutions for an African problem? Well, to an extent, uh, we can say that, but to another level, uh, I think U.S. involvement is just to play uh, the role of an observer, the role of an observer, and also to ensure that there is also neutrality, then there is also utmost good faith on both parties in this conflict. This conflict, which actually uh, started in around November 2020, the, the conflict had always been there, but it all began with political crisis. Uh, between the Tigray region of Ethiopia with the Ethiopian government just not long after Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed uh, was elected and he was trying to negotiate and do certain things with the Tigrayan political uh, uh, leaders. But they rejected and that gradually was the beginning of this crisis and eventually it ate deep into it. So this Tigray rebels began to attack the major uh, strategic facilities of the Ethiopian state. And that was how the conflict escalated. Over the time as this conflict began, the African Union had done so well. Uh, one of the very first immediate things the African Union ordered or instructed was to investigate allegations of human rights violations, human rights issues, humanitarian emergencies, a lack of access for water, a bit to water, food, and other things, and blockade of even humanitarian aid into that particular region. All of these were the major issues. So uh, the African Union tried to investigate, and African Union uh, did so well to get its first-hand information. But all attempts to broker peace, to bring the two parties together to facilitate uh, a peaceful end to this two-year conflict as not uh, all those attempts they have not yielded major efforts until now when uh, the parties particularly the Tigran rebels uh, decided to say okay they are ready for peace talks and they are ready to move forward and they are ready to do what the continent wants in order to ensure peace and stability and especially to return to status quo in Ethiopia. So as a result of this, uh, a peace talk team uh, was put in place by the African Union, led by, facilitated by uh, the AU Horn of African Envoy and former president of Nigeria, President Olushe Gumbasunjo, uh, in his team also uh, is, uh, we have a, uh, former president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta. We also have former vice president of South Africa, uh, Fisile Mambunguka. Then there is also, just like you said, the U.S. Uh, East African Regional Envoy, Mr. Mike Ama, is there to observe. It's just to play an observatory or uh, to do an observation of the whole process of the peace talks so that uh, neither of the two parties we have any excuse to say no, uh, it was the Ethiopian government that 
that reneged on their promises, and neither would they say uh, the Tigran rebels or their leaders are the one who says uh, they are digressing or they don't want to fulfill all the promises they have made. Apart from the U.S. regional envoy, who is also there to play the role of uh, observer, there is also the guard executive secretary, uh, Mr. Wanet uh, Gebebu, and also there is this former uh, Ethiopian Foreign Affairs uh, Minister. So all of these constitute the peace talk teams, uh, team happening in Ethiopia, brokering the peace between the Ethiopian government and the Tigran rebels in that Pretorian peace talk. So we hope that uh, this, at the end of the day, we bring to uh, stability, we bring peace, we bring understanding among these things. But the Ethiopians are actually clamoring for uh, the lifting of blockade of humanitarian uh, essential services, uh, the lifting of access to humanitarian aid and all of that so that there will be peace. Because uh, there's a U.S. report that says half a million uh, lives have been lost to this crisis since two years. And if Ethiopia, which is the headquarters of the African continental body, the AU, is in such a crisis, then it portrays a, a bad uh, signal for African continent. Apart from this, uh, what actually Africans are clamoring for, yes, African uh, solution to African problems. But as we do that, we also need to ensure neutrality, understanding, peace, and there we're going to have what we call uh, stability. We are going to have development, and there will be progress if all of this uh, happens. So we hope there will be peace. We hope there will be stability. If you look at the history of Ethiopia, Dr. Ethiopia Dr. has Barrera. always been in one small crisis. I'm, yes. I'm sorry, but I need to ask you this question because we, we don't have plenty of time. Um, groups like Amnesty International have made it very clear that no side is void of, um, no, no, no one's hands is clean when it comes to taking responsibility or have contributed to or have committed crimes against humanity. Of course, I know there's, we, we, we both know there's been a media blackout, so we don't know how this is being addressed. But based on what you've seen in the past and your speculation and what information you might have so far, how do you think that will be addressed in this um, peace talk? Well, anyway, in every, in every peace talk, uh, there is this understanding of neutrality, understanding, then negotiation. Then it's also a case of give and take. There will be compromises. Uh, nobody uh, between both parties, either the Ethiopian government or the Tigran rebels, nobody is an angel. None of the parties, none of the two parties we claim to be an angel. Both of them have contributed to the humanitarian emergency and even the humanitarian disaster, the number of deaths, problem of humanitarian crisis, humanitarian issues in that place. So both of them are culpable. But in this context now, one of the major uh, principles of resolving uh, conflict is to get to the root cause of every problem. And that is what this uh, AU peace, call, uh, peace talk brokered for these two parties is actually looking at the, the root causes, then what are the what are the issues they are fighting over, then there will always be compromises. There will be compromises. Both the Tigran rebels will compromise certain issues, and also the Ethiopian government will also compromise certain things. They will compromise too. So, uh, so that it will be a win-win situation. It will be a situation of no winner, no loser. And it will be a no winner, no vanquish or anything. It will be a win-win situation. It will be a lose-lose situation. It will be a situation whereby they will leave that place and the right thing will be done and there will be peace in all of Ethiopia. So both parties will own up to their own problems, the issues, their contributions to these humanitarian challenges and problems that Ethiopia faces today. So and I know at the end of the day, because of the pedigree of the uh, constitution of the personalities of, this, uh, of the members of this team, 
I think it's going to go a long way because we have a former president, two former presidents in President Olushe Gombasojo and also President Uhuru Kenyatta and that former vice president of South Africa, plus the role of an observer being played by the U.S. regional envoy there, Mike, and also the executive secretary of IGAD, which is uh, peculiar to uh, East African uh, countries, uh, the Horn of Africa. So we hope they will own up. We hope there will be compromises. We hope that both the situation will be a win-win situation. That's and right. It will not be winner takes all. Yes. Uh, it will not be winner takes all so because we, we will, nobody we will wants to be a winner, nobody wants to be a loser. Yes, so we will keep our eyes on that situation. Dr. Joshua Bolarimwa, a fellow at Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, thank you for giving us such a holistic insight into the current peace talks happening.